to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined today by David Dweck, the Broward Miami President of the Miami Association of Realtors. David, thank you so much for being here today. You're very welcome. Thank you, Abby. Well, let's begin. Your career began in law enforcement before pivoting to real estate. How do you find yourself using innovative and adaptive skills you use to work in law enforcement as you lead the Miami Association of Realtors? You know, law enforcement gave me such a great background uh, about people. And and that's what I have to say the most most important thing that was about my career. I spent 15 out of my 25 plus years as a school resource or DARE officer. So I was always working with families and schools and kids, everything in everyday life. Uh, I did have the opportunity to walk a beat uh, in uh, low-income areas, public housing, uh, and in fact, my last one, my last summons was to actually live in a public housing unit to help clean up an area. And when when you're you're in an area like that, and you, you're meeting people of all different walks of life, it, it gives you a chance to really um, expand yourself. And and I think from that, I got a greater understanding as to uh, poverty. I got an understanding of uh, people that have to swallow their pride, take a little public assistance and, and want to work their way out of it. And, and uh, of course I've seen in law enforcement, I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly, but uh, especially uh, getting to do that in two different states in Florida and Tennessee, it uh, gave me a really great uh, background, but I am a native Floridian. I was born and raised in Miami and my first policing assignment was in Miami. So um, I can say that I know this community very, very well. Absolutely. As the real estate market continues to heat up with the relocations driving prices up, the Miami Association of Realtors has a unique opportunity to address the needs of the community. What are some of the unique ways the organization is finding to keep Miami a home for those already living here as more people continue to move in? Miami has always been a destination. And, and if, you, if you talk internationally, where people want to be in general is Florida, especially the Miami uh, area, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. West Palm. I mean, that's that's what they always talk about. Uh, and I, I can say that uh, being born and raised here, I can tell you there's been a lot of changes. Uh, you know, Miami Beach, for example, and that's where I was raised my first 25 years. Uh, it went from areas where you could buy a whole block from for $250,000 to now you might be able to get a little airspace for $250,000. Uh, so the price, prices of housing has definitely had a, a significant impact on what people can afford and where they can live. Uh, and people have desires of where they want to live. And one of the things that we in the Miami Association of Realtors are very active in is community projects. Uh, one of our most notable projects most re- recently was a uh, container home that we did in partnership with um, Miami-Dade County and the city of South Miami. And it was actually uh, on a block right there where I used to walk a beat. So I, I knew that area very well and they used to have these little shacks and stuff that barely you could say were, were houses and to offer the opportunity for someone to have, um, it, you may call it a tiny home, is those containers are kind of small, but it's a modern home. It's, it's got all the conveniences you need, uh, necessities, and it's a strong home. It's hurricane resistant because those containers are, are built so well. Uh, so this is one way that we took an initiative to try to show a demonstration project for affordable housing. We also advocate every year, Great American Realtor Days, uh, we just uh, there earlier in the year that we uh, go to our legislators and we advocate for the Sadowski funds. The Sadowski funds is a trust fund that the state set up in the early 90s and are supposed to help low income uh, and seniors uh, get get affordable housing. It also helps uh, some with our housing authorities with uh, tax credits. Uh, There are tax credits that are available to developers and we try to get uh, public and uh, private partnerships together and um, try to build affordable housing or, or senior uh, site, maybe a 55 and older or 62 and older. Um, but I've had a passion for affordable housing. I, I've, I've pushed it to my limits, always kind of working with my investors, trying to get that done too, just like the association. And uh, I do volunteer as the chair of the Hollywood Housing Authority. That is something that uh, is near and dear to my heart and watching families grow up through so many years keeping Miami as affordable as possible and not everywhere, you know, affordable is a a relevant term. People say, oh, it's really affordable in this location or it's really affordable in that location. And that really depends on a person's income. So uh, that's that's the big driver today. And you're right, affordable and attainable housing is so important for South Florida to address because real estate in South Florida continues to break records and become increasingly competitive. 
What are some creative ways buyers can better their chances of winning a bid on a house in such a hot market? So buyers working with their um, professionals, and, and I want to, you know, say, you know, professionals to me as a realtor. Realtor, we're, we're not just licensed real estate agents and brokers. We actually sustain to a code of ethics and, and subscribe to that and follow that each and every day. So when we're true to that, we're getting our buyers ready, uh, working with their lender, whoever that lender is, and making sure they have a solid pre-approval, not just a pre-qualification, because a pre-qualification means almost, I hate to say, almost nothing. Uh, pre-approval means that they've collected all the relevant documents that would be needed, except for the most important ingredient, the actual home that they wish to purchase. And they know that they, they have sufficient income, their credit is, is, is right, They're, they can afford it without getting into any kind of trouble, their debt to income ratio is right. And so that is one of the most important things that they need to have on the front end. It's not just about going out looking for a house, you have to be ready for that house. Making sure that they have enough savings uh, for the closing. It's not just about the down payment, there's closing costs. And closing costs can run anywhere from two to 5,000 or more, depending on the purchase price of the home. Uh, so it, it's all about really putting your heart and soul into the house that you really like, making the best possible offer at the time you put that offer in and not just say, well, they'll come back to me because in this market, they don't come back to you. They have maybe five, maybe 28 offers on that same piece of property. So I, I hate to say highest and best, but that is what they'll ask you for. Uh, so I always tell people on the front end, give it your best offer now. So when they come back and ask for your highest and best, that was my highest and best. On the rental side, as rental rates continue to increase, what more can South Florida do to address the growing problem? So on the rental side, you know, you have people look at two legs of that. They'll say, you know, we need affordable housing and we need workforce housing. To some degree, they're somewhat the same, but there are some, some differences. So uh, affordable housing are for the people that are in the service industry, uh, that are working in the restaurants and hospitality, uh, uh, automotive repairs, whatever it may be, where they're not making necessarily a, a high, high figure of salary, but they need a place to live. They may not be able to afford a house. They may have some credit issues. So um, we, need, we need looking at, at, at that, as opposed to where we talk about workforce housing, sometimes people relate that to people like nurses, doctors, uh, police officers, uh, something that they can afford you know, in, in their price range, which may be high, well, certainly would be higher than, than um, um, a blue collar worker kind of looking at it that way. So you need both. And the only way to do that is to work with developers, work with investors to build more uh, apartment homes, that, uh, apartment houses that they could go ahead and rent to these and, and get the tax credits. You know, there's, there's a 9% tax credit in Florida and there's a 4%. The 9% is very competitive and it's very hard to get. 4% is available almost all the time. And if, if, if a developer or investor is willing to take that uh, number, uh, they can go ahead and, and get a really good structure building. They're not going to have any problem filling it. it, it there's more demand now than there are available housing. And uh, a lot of people have had to move in with other family members. Uh, so uh, it, it'd really be great to get everybody to get back to have a, some kind of normalcy uh, after COVID uh, has kind of um, stifled a little of that. To round out our discussion today, what role does creativity play in remaining competitive in today's landscape? So being creative, uh, taking a different look at things, uh, taking a fresh look at things. And you know, people use the word think outside the box, but it, it's really more about taking a look at the opportunities that are available. And this can be in everything from um, a buyer looking for a, a new way of, of getting a better loan. It could be a seller figuring out what is my property really worth? And I'm like just gonna price it high just to try to get as much as I can get. And then it's also about the real estate professional that's helping them and say, what is my customer service all about? And how am I helping my customers, whether they be buyers or sellers or investors? You know, what am I doing to differentiate myself? And I, I have to tell you, technology is a big thing. You have to have the right tools to help your customers understand the, the world around them, the communities they're looking to live in, 
their financing opportunities. And this does, because I mentioned financing, that expands to the, the uh, lender. Lenders have to look at this too. It's not about a commercial. It's not just about filling out a form. It's not about some kind of digital ad. It's all about what you're looking for and what you're doing and how you can take those tools and move them around. And what I find is for our customers is a combination of several different uh, things work well for them. If it is somebody that's looking for financing, that they did shop the market, they did look to see who's making them the best possible offer for them to do things. And, you know, I think probably 70, 80% of people go ahead and search the internet for things, home financing, products, Amazon, whatever it is. And they'll, they'll go ahead and do that before they even contact a professional. So, so they've done a lot of their homework. So me as a professional, I got to really be on my ball and I got to make sure that I'm aware of all these different uh, avenues that they can take because they're looking to me to say, well, what's your recommendation? What's, what do you recommend is the best way for us to approach this prop, uh, uh, property or prospect? And taking that all in together, I think we brainstorm, we invite the, and, and this is the one part of the creativity that I think is very important, is I look at my customers as my partner. They're not just a customer, they're not a client, they're my partner. Because if they don't succeed, I don't succeed. If they don't get what they want, well, let's face it, I don't get paid, but it, it, it's, it's all about that partnership. And I think being creative is understanding that they are a partner and a part of the deal. And don't just exclude them. Don't just say, you know everything and you do everything. Get them involved. Exactly. There's no I in team. Well, thank you very much, David. I really enjoyed our conversation. Well, thank you, Abby. I appreciate it very much. And uh, thank you for inviting us. That was David Dweck, the Broward Miami president for the Miami Association of Realtors. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to hear more CEOs and thought leaders share their opinions and advice on today's business plan. Until next time, I'm Abby Maloney, and this has been Invest Insights. Thanks for tuning in.